the 1996 Olympic gold medalist with the USA women's soccer team. She was a star at Stanford, four-time All-American, and Player of the Year. She represented the United States, two World Cup championships, and Olympic glory, an international soccer star, and now a community leader and a mentor for young athletes. Winning an Olympic gold medal is it's hard, <laughs> but it's the most gratifying experience in the world. When I was growing up, I used to think, you know, well, if someone had said, yeah, how would you define a leader? I would probably have said, well, he probably is a man, and he talks with a really authoritative voice, and he has a title next to his name, and maybe he's sitting on a horse with a sword, you know? <laughs> and that's what I thought a leader was, was this really strong man I read about in the history books. And it wasn't until I was surrounded by these women that I realized that, my gosh, leadership is such a broader definition than that. And there are so many different ways you can lead, so many different styles to leadership, and especially given you know, when I started playing back in the 80s on the national team, I was 16 years old when I first got on the U.S. Women's National Team. They couldn't put us on a youth national team because there were no youth national teams at the time. I mean, the full senior women's team was a new concept back in the late 80s. So they took a chance and threw Christine Lilly and myself. Christine Lilly was 16, I was 16, Mia was 15, and we were the three youngsters that came in. And just to put it in perspective, there was no Women's World Cup. How many of you guys watched last, no, was it last summer's? 2011 summer USA-Japan final, right? Which was really cool to see. In Germany, packed crowds, they put on a, a, a great show. Well, there was no Women's World Cup when we first started playing. There was no women's soccer in the Olympics. And I'll talk about three lessons in leadership tonight um, that, that really stuck with me. And the first one is, is figuring out what your style is. So if you imagine self, how do you lead yourself? Because if you can't lead yourself, if you're not confident in your leadership abilities, it's gonna be hard convincing others to follow you. And what I learned is, is everyone's got a different style, right? I was blessed with really good vocal cords. <laughs> really good vocal cords. And it really is a blessing. I can project on a field. I can get someone's attention in a crowded stadium that's really loud, right? Mia, on the other hand, does not have any vocal cords. I don't know if you knew this about her. But literally, in the middle of a game, with thousands of people watching, she'd be like, Julie! <laughs> and I'd be like, what? Julie! <laughs> I'd be like, stop. I didn't try. So my style was very different from Mia's style. Mia didn't like the spotlight. She didn't want to be the center of attention in the middle of the huddle, pounding her fists on her chest, getting the team rallied, right? I was probably going to be the more vocal leader. Brandi Chastain, remember the one who ripped her shirt off after the 1999 World Cup, right? Had this big donut gut, remember that one? <laughs> I said, Brandi, if you're going to take your shirt off, could you work out a little bit? <laughs> it's really kind of disgusting. <laughs> No, Brandy was like the really fit one. And what's really sad is we were lifting partners and she looked like that and I still look like this little scrawny thing. <laughs> and so what I learned over the years by watching these women is that my definition of leadership was so wrong. And that in fact, I didn't have to be the white man standing on the horse, sitting on the horse, or a man with a president next to my name, a title, or even the captain of the team, right? That I could lead in a different way. And we all can lead in different ways. And that was a powerful thing because I think that's the most important thing is finding what your voice is to be a leader. Because if you're speaking with your voice, it's genuine. We've all gone through it, right? If you're in the middle of a game, whatever sport you play, you're having a bad game, how often do you, do you find yourself sometimes going like, Ooh, I am awful today. <laughs> right? And the language gets like this and your head's down. And, and you kick in the ground, and what does that do to the rest of the team? What does it do? Do you think that's gonna make me go, yes! Awesome, let's go! Right? I'm now worrying about this player that's doing that. 
Another saying we had on the national team, attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching? Right? Attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching? Think about that. When you're feeling down, when you're feeling sorry for yourself, your teammates know you want to be out there. They know you don't have to show them physically by being down and angry and mad. Show them by cheering them on and then pushing them harder at practice. And that was something we really, really bought into and did so well. There's this misconception like, I gotta be a star to lead. I gotta be a star to make a difference. No, you don't, you gotta care. You've gotta have the confidence to say, I can go in there. If I'm passionate enough about something, I can go in there and make a difference. I've got a documentary you should watch. It's called Emmanuel's Gift. It's about one guy born with a disability in Ghana. And he goes and changes how his entire country views people with disabilities. No formal education, because his parents were dead, right? No money, he lives on the streets. He didn't come from some leadership think tank. He didn't win an NBA final. He cared. He cared enough to say, this isn't right and I'm gonna do something about it. And that's the really cool thing we challenge our students with every year at the Leadership Academy. Go back in your communities, take all these things you've learned from sports, this gift you've been given, and now go not just be great leaders on the field, but go be leaders in your community. Because the really cool thing is, I think leadership is a choice, right? And we say at the Academy, so choose to matter. Because you can, that's the really cool thing. That's what it is. And you can do it in your own way, in your own voice. You could be the loud, raw, raw one, or you could be the quiet one, but you can be equally effective. And that's the really neat thing.